Hey Hodies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hope Mess Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be doing the cream contour video, the ultimate quote-unquote ultimate cream contour video. In front of me I have 10 cream contours that I have been testing for the past couple of months to figure out which one ultimately will work best for me. But if you happen to be new to my channel, hi, welcome. My channel is about loving my makeup collection as it currently is, first and foremost, while being very critical of new makeup releases and just trying to be very discerning about what I do bring into my makeup collection. I also am very privileged in the fact that I do have a YouTube channel with a small following and sometimes I do get PR and I do make money on YouTube and through Patreon. That support allows me to do reviews every now and then so if the kind of content where you see someone using the same stuff over and over again scratches an itch for you I would love to have you subscribe. But also if you're the person who likes to buy every makeup release and that feels really good to you and that's the best way for you to navigate the beauty space, I would still love to have you subscribe. We're all allowed to navigate this space however we see fit. Like I said, I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash hopemesstom. You can follow me there for additional content and my podcast with my friend Kaki of Kaki Reviews Beauty. I also have a podcast with my friend Tiffany that's on Spotify. It's called Recollect. You can check that down below. It is a music podcast slash pop culture podcast, so check that out if you're interested in it and make sure you like this video and comment and do all those things, all the YouTubery things. Because I'm me, I like to pull back a little bit and talk about why we are doing a cream contour video and why I have 10 cream contours. I don't think any of you need to test 10 cream contours and I don't suggest that any of you test 10 cream contours. I just don't think that's something that we need to do. But because I am a YouTuber and I was in search of a new cream contour, I figured we can make content out of it, which is why I have 10 cream contours sitting in front of me. What happened was at the beginning of the year, well, I think like for the past year or so, I had been very close to panning this product from Fenty. It's the Fenty Cheeks Out Cream Bronzer in the shade Amber, which I use as a contour. And this is what it looks like. And it is basically kaput. The goal is to replace this. The problem with this, I got really sick of it at the end. There are actually no problems with this product. My thought was I could find a better color and something that I felt more excitement of using. And it's not to say that I couldn't come back to this in the future. I just think that we ran our course and like I was so close to finishing it and then trying to to finish it felt like a chore. It was like this led to this led to this led to this and so I'm just I'm like a little bit over this so which is why I didn't purchase it again. Plus a lot of makeup has come out since I bought this product for the first time. This is from launch. This is from when they launched this. And I just finished it like a couple of months ago. We're just replacing this. That's why I'm doing this video. What I have done is I've scored them <laughs> and I've given each category in the score a ranking out of 10. So there are five categories and then at the end they have a score out of 50. What's important to keep in mind with this criteria, the ranking criteria that I'm about to give you, is that it's my ranking criteria and it's like criteria for me and specific to me and my skin tone and like my skin type. But my skin type hasn't really come into play too much as I've been exploring these. But just for transparency's sake, I have oily skin. I have fair skin. So the kind of contour color I'm looking for is going to be different maybe than from the kind of contour color you're looking for. So color is the first category. I like a cool toned contour. And I don't mean just like brown that's cool. <laughs> I like almost like gray. One of my favorite powder contours I've ever had was from the Lunatic Cosmetics Labs, the contour volume one. There were two really light gray shades in there and I loved using them for contour. They seem to work really well with my skin. Now there are other people who have my same skin tone that do like that little bit more of a brown tour. But I was strictly looking for something that felt more like a contour, like gray contour. Not something that I could put on my face and it could be mistaken as brown. That's what I'm looking for. So whenever they get a good rating, it means that they have more gray in them. But you can also utilize that to make your own decisions about something that I've tried. If you like a little more brown in it, you can take that and run with it. The next category is blendability. How easy is it for the product to blend? So I like to use a brush. So it was really important for me for these to blend out beautifully with a brush. I don't like using a sponge. I very rarely forget to dampen it if I am like specifically using a sponge for something. Thing. And I also don't really use my fingers to do makeup application a lot of the time. So what I really want it to do is blend in very well with a brush. So this blendability is like with a brush. So that's something to keep in mind too, because if you use a sponge, I really didn't test it with a sponge because that's not how I use contour. And while I could sit here and test things like the myriad of ways that everyone could use them. I don't think that's helpful for me deciding which cream contour is good for me. But as I describe each product, you can obviously take away and run with whatever information you want, just like you can with the color information. Category three is nose contourability. This category is here. I don't really contour my nose, but I 
figured that some of you might be coming here to this video not having seen any of my other content, maybe looking specifically for easy nose contour. So I just kept that in mind. So I did contour my nose while testing all of these. It's not something I do all the time, but I have actually in the process of trying all of these gotten kind of back into it. Like I haven't contoured my nose since 2016, but I also think that contouring products have also come a long way since 2016. The next category is ease of use. So how easy did I think the product was to use? Uh, like a combination of everything. Like was the color right? Was the blending right? Do I do I feel like it was fussy in any way? And if it was fussy, what what's the problem with it? So that's ease of use. And then the last category we have is beginner friendly. So if you are new to contour and you're watching this video, I have given like a ranking out of 10 on how easy I think each product is to use out of 10. This is not really important to me in my decision making. I have been doing makeup for years, so my skill level is probably gonna be different than yours, and we're all at different skill levels. So something like nose contour ability getting a low ranking for me or not being something that I think a product is specifically good at isn't gonna like really affect into how I feel about the product. So that's more for you. That's more for you. If you're looking to get into contour and you want to know how easily blendable something is, that's what that information is there for. That's a you category. That's a for you category, not a for me category. I also take into consideration packaging, but I didn't put it in the ranking, but that was also something that I am considering because I like to interact with my makeup in a specific way. So packaging is important to me, but it might not be important to you. You might just, performance might be the only thing that you're worried about. And we're going to find out all of those things. So as I said, I'm going to start with the worst ranking out of 50 all the way to the best best ranking out of 50, but just keep in mind the ranking doesn't actually mean that that it's my favorite. It's just this arbitrary th number because ultimately the thing that I know that I'm going to keep is not actually the winner of all the categories. So as we proceed through this video, what's going to happen is I'm going to talk about them one by one. Footage of me applying them to my face, like applying them to my face, is gonna pop up and then also some arm swatches. And then at the end of all of the rankings, before I reveal which one I'm going to keep, I'm going to have just arm swatches with all of them next to each other on my arm. So you can see them all in one place. So you can see the different colors and the, you know, the textures of all of them. I'll get up really close for you. I probably won't be talking you through that. It's just gonna be swatches, right? You're just gonna be able to see all of the contours next to each other. And what I advise you to do, if you're looking, if you're really trying to get into the color. I'm not going to do this for you. I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of legwork. If you're watching on a phone or on your computer and you want to compare two of the colors, because I am applying them to my face and in wrist and arm swatches for you individually, I'm asking you to screenshot that image and then screenshot the other image and then flip, go to your camera roll and flip between the two so you can see the difference in colors. Now I'm going to describe them to you as we go, but I'm not comparing each one to each one. I'm gonna ask you to do that because I think you're capable. I hope that's all good for you. Let's proceed with the video. So in last place, if you watched my channel at all, you know exactly which one's coming in last place with a score of 14 out of 10 is the Danessa Myricks Contour Balm. I have the shade Light One. For the color, I gave it a two. The problem is, is that it's this baby poop brown. And while I love like a baby poop brown eyeshadow color, I don't like it on my cheeks because this color made everything look muddy. I hated every makeup look that I did with this. Like I did not find it a treat to use. I only used it as much as I needed to do to make my decision. I tried really hard to make it work for me, but like, it, the color I think is actually like the part of this that is what ruins it. I cannot really see past the color. There's also some other issues with it, but like the color of this is just really bad. And it's actually not something that I think is a contour shade at all. While we have some brown tours coming up in here that things are like that are more brown, like I just don't think this is a color that anyone would want to contour with. The thing is, I respect Anissa of my rags. I and this is something I've learned when I've used her products in the past, and there's also another Nessa Myricks product that we're going to talk about in here, is that I don't think her and I do our makeup the same, and I don't think that the way that she uses color is the way that I use color, and that's absolutely okay. I think, obviously, that Nessa Myricks is incredibly talented, and I do trust her to make good products. I don't think that this one is a good product, especially for consumers. However she uses this and makes it work and make it look beautiful on people, it, I wasn't doing it. I don't have that skill or that's just not how I do my makeup, which is cool. That's fine. We're all allowed to have different takes on makeup and hers is very specific, but this color just really didn't do it for me. The blendability of this, I gave it a 4 out of 10. It was kind of hard to blend. So it is a balm, as promised. It is a balm. Sometimes things call themselves a balm, but I think they perform more like a cream. This is a balm. It needs warmth to pick up. 
So on a brush, it doesn't really do well. And I find that's the case for most balmy products is that like they want the warmth. So using your fingers is probably ideal. But because I want to use a brush with this product and I'm not really into finger painting, that just really loses a lot of points for me. It might do better with a sponge like picking it up, even picking up with a sponge or even blending it out with a sponge, like getting it on your face, maybe with your finger and then pressing it with a sponge. I'm sure that would work a little bit better than with a brush. I just feel like everything looked muddy. And I do think that also had to do with the blending. I just feel like it would go on my face and just kind of get stuck where it was. So like I needed to add more, but then when I added more, it just like added more of this ugly color. Like this problem leads to the other problem leads to the other problem. As far as nose contouring goes, I wouldn't use this on my nose. I think even if you were like tapping it in, I don't think it would just, I don't think it would work out very well just because of the blendability of it. There are going to be some products here that are definitely shaped easier for nose contouring and that's also why I gave it a lower rating. I don't think that having a low nose contour score is technically a bad thing. It's just one of those things where it's like, this wasn't designed to be easy to like draw on your face, obviously. Like that wasn't the, it was designed to be used with tools and I think for that reason that's just like why it's lower but it's not a break it's not a category that breaks me at all. Beginner friendly. I don't think this is beginner friendly unless you are just someone who likes to use your fingers for everything then maybe it would be pretty beginner friendly in, in that situation. I gave it a 1 out of 10 because I think the color mixed with how I hard I found it to blend mixed with all of the things just made it like something where if you're looking to get into contour I think this would just be a real tough start even as someone who has like seven years of makeup under my belt seven years of you know, doing makeup on myself under my belt in like this kind of fashion where I am contouring and stuff. If I can't get it to work for me, I think it's gonna be really hard for someone who's just getting into contouring to figure out how to make it work for them. I don't like like objectively saying that this is a bad product, but that's how I feel. I just, I, I can't envision this being a good product for anyone, especially when it comes to the color and my skin tone. Perhaps the deeper ones work better on deeper skin, like the colors work better on deeper skin, but it's, the color is like such the deal breaker. And then it also not being really easy for me to blend is like the, the cherry on top. And it's just a, a product that is not good for me. So I think you can easily see that this one is getting decluttered. I'm glad I don't have to look at it anymore. In ninth place with a score of 25 out of 10 is the Oma Double Take Contour in White Pearl. It's their freed contour stick. Unlike the last one, I'm gonna mention the packaging here. The packaging of this is pretty satisfying. It looks a lot like another one that we're gonna be testing out what, from Westman Atelier. It's not as weighted, but it's still very satisfying to hold. I wish that they hadn't gone with like this silver because you know, you get your fingerprints on it and like contour's a little bit messy. It's like brown, right? <laughs> so it's like one of those things where it's like, uh, okay, like we kind of, I don't know. I don't know what packaging I would have wanted it to be in, but like I, it's overall, I find it like very satisfying packaging especially for the price point it's at. So let's go through category by category and tell you why I ranked it where I did. So for color, I gave it a six. It is definitely more brown than I would like it to be, but it definitely has some gray in there. There's definitely gray in there. It definitely feels more like a contour shade than not, but it's still not quite as gray as I would like it to be. So <clears throat> for that, that's why I gave it a six, but I still think it's overall very good. And I think maybe six was a little bit harsh for the score, but I think also there are some other problems with this that make me feel some kind of way about it. For blendability, I gave this a four. So it blends really nicely, but it never stops going. The first time I used it, it was on camera. I have footage of it. If I remember to put it in, I'll put it in here. I'm gonna be brave and bold. I'm just gonna swipe this on the face. I'm putting it out on my, my neck and it just keeps it's going, it just keeps going. I almost feel like it blends out maybe a little too far. Like it's, it has like a little, it's like too much spread. It blends really nicely, but it's like, it just kind of keeps going. It was kept going down my neck. And so I'm just kind of like staying a little more concentrated. I think there's maybe just a little bit of a learning curve to it. I might like this one better applied with a brush instead of applying it directly to the skin. This does blend too, it blends too far. <laughs> like it's like I keep blending and then they're just, it keeps spreading. Like it doesn't, doesn't, it has no stop. It just wants to keep keep going. It's an interesting problem to have. I don't even know if I want to call it a problem, but like I just keep, it just keeps going. That leads me to believe that I'm applying too much. So I will apply it with a brush next time. It, I think it does blend out really nicely, but it's also just like, it, it keep, like if I would have just kept using the brush that I was blending it out with, it would just cover my whole face and contour. Like look at how much product is still on this brush. I'm just gonna wipe it on my hand. My hand's gonna be a different color. This is solely to demo and show you like how much this would go. 
and for no reason beyond that. See? See? It kept it keeps going down the inside of my arm too. It's a stick, right? It's a, a stick. So in my mind, it's designed to be drawn on the areas that I want to contour and then blend out. So I did that, but then it just kept going. And what happened was basically I could have covered my whole face with this contour color with the amount that I put on. And I don't feel like I was trying to be excessive. I I was using it as I was expecting it to be used, right? Like, because I was like drawing it on my face. You know how like most products, when you blend them, it stays the most saturated where you put it and then it, it blends out and like, you know, blurs the edges and also blends out some of the color of where you actually placed it. But this one was just like, took the color, I was gonna take it as far. Like if this was a, a, found, a foundation formula, Oh my god, that'd be great. But I it, it like it looked good as it blended too. It was like it was very easy to blend. It was very malleable. But ultimately, I just it just kept going too far. Perhaps if this was in a pot like this from Danessa Myricks, that wouldn't have happened to me. But you designed it like this. So you like my cue is when I look at this packaging, it's like, oh yeah, it's meant to draw on my face. But the best way for me to use this, and I did use it a couple of times, was to take a brush and put it on top and then put it on my face. <laughs> And that really bugged me because this is a stick. And in my brain, this stick should be able to draw on the face and that should apply the right amount of product. And it just simply did not do that. For nose contour ability, I gave it a five out of 10, like, cause you can easily draw it on, but then you also then have the problem where you're gonna have gray, brown, kind of like going onto your cheek. If you can get the right amount of product, if you are applying with a brush, it works really well on the nose. But again, to me, like a perfect nose con, like this would have gotten a higher score if like, Whenever I apply it, it applied the perfect amount and then didn't just keep going and going and going. Ease of use, I gave it a five. Like, I don't think it's hard to use. I think once I learned that it was so, it went so, so little, went so far, uh, I was like, okay, it's not like hard to use. But again, it's not really intuitive because you give me a stick. I try to use it as a stick and that's not the best way to use it. So why is it a stick? And beginner friendly, I also gave it a five, like, because I think the color is really good. And I also do think it blends out really beautifully. I think that a newcomer would take this just like I did, put it on their face, being like, this is how people draw their contour on their face, blend it out. And then all of a sudden, maybe look like they accidentally did something offensive that they didn't mean to do, because that's kind of how I felt whenever I put it on. So I didn't care for this. I thought it was going to rank a little bit higher because there are some other products coming up that I thought I liked less than this, but I don't think I really had a good experience with this. But I do think that if someone else who's more willing to give it the time of day than I happen to be after I like didn't really care for it the way it worked for me the first couple times I used it, could really get something out of it, but it's not for me. In eighth place is the Milk Contour Stick, and this is in the shade Toasted, and it got a 26 out of 50, so just like slightly better than the than the Oma one. The packaging, I mean, I don't think there's actually less product in here than there is in a lot of these. There's 5.7 grams in the Sculpt Stick, and then there's 6 grams in this. So like the package sizing is very different, but the amount of product inside is basically the same. So it's not like it's like a mini, right? Like it's, it, it is a full size. There's a lot of product in here. It's just like the presentation of it, I don't know, it feels like a travel size. Like, like I just, in my hands, it feels so small. It feels so small. I don't know, it just feels like a little dinky, you know? Just like, it's not, it's not really where it's at for me. For shade, for the color, I gave it a six. It is pretty gray. It is pretty gray, but still has more brown than I would like. I would say it's like a little bit grayer than the Oma. So if you're, if you're afraid to go too gray, the Oma might be like a better color pick for you. If you want a little bit more gray, I think that the milk one would be great for you. The problem with this one comes with the blendability. And I gave it a five and I think I'm being generous there. And I don't know why it was so generous, but I gave it a generous. Again, the scores are kind of arbitrary, but let's talk about the blendability of it. Unlike the Oma, this one kind of, you put it on your face and it got stuck. And just like the Danessa Myricks, this one happened to make everything look muddy. Now, of course I am looking for something that has a little bit more of a gray undertone, but like I kind of like with the Danessa Myricks, every time I put this on, it, like it would like stick 
and then not really like move like the edges would blend out but it just like felt like too much it didn't feel easy to blend it didn't feel like it was doing what I was asking to do it I felt like I was fighting it every step of the way much like the Oma contour I found that this was better applied with a brush so taking my brush on the product and then applying it to my face gave me a much softer better look and again just like the criticism of the Oma contour stick this is a stick and so I feel as though I should be able to draw it on my face and that should be the best way to apply it like that the formula should be designed to apply that way and it wasn't now obviously there are going to be a lot of people who they're going to be okay with the fact that they take a brush to it and that's how they would rather apply it but again I'm looking for something like with an ease of use if if it's gonna come like this that's how I want to apply it now there are definitely some more potted products that get a better rating coming up here so I don't need it to be in this but if you're selling it to me like this then that's how I think it should apply I'm not trying to like be like a hypocrite where I'm gonna like give an, a score to something that has a, like that's in a pot a better rating nose contourability I gave this a a, a six because un, like it it wasn't as hard to blend and like make look good as the Oma one was. It just worked a little bit better. I don't think the nose contouring never seemed to be a problem, probably because it was on such a small surface area. I think whenever I was getting the lines on my cheek was really where it, <laughs> that it took a turn for the worse. Like that was where like everything got muddy and it just felt like it was sticking and it like really didn't want to blend out. And then also I feel like the shade when it got on my skin didn't like look the same as it did whenever it was in the, like it didn't like hold the grayness and just ended up looking more like a bronzer and then if I was gonna use a cream bronzer I wouldn't want it in this, this formula it just feels it felt like stuck like not like sticky like it didn't stay sticky on the skin but it just like felt sticky as I was blending it out and ugh, don't like that ease of use I gave it a five like you can use that you can make it work but it's not something that is like super easy to use again if it was if it worked the way I wanted it to it would have been really good but didn't do that so for beginner friendly, I gave this a four. I don't think that this is where I would start if I was starting with a cream contour. It's a bit of a bummer. I haven't used a milk product in a really long time. I have a powder highlighter that they don't make anymore. It's the only other thing I think I have from milk in my collection at this point. I'm always like rooting for milk. I thought what they were bringing at first was like really interesting. And I just feel like I don't know what they're doing anymore. And like this, this was so close. Because when they dropped these, I was really excited about them, but now that I've tried it, I'm much less excited about it. In seventh place is, with a score of 27 out of 50, is the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush, and I have the shade Nutcracker here. So this is not a specifically a contour product. This was something that people had asked me to try and thought that might work well for me as a contour, seeing other people use it as a contour. You know, in those makeup artist lines, sometimes there's just stuff that you find where you're like, oh, I could use that for that. So there's not like a, a line of this for all different skin tones. This, this is not the first product like this where it's like, it's a thing and I'm using it as a contour, but it's not specifically a contour product with a bunch of shades to be used as a contour. So know that, like this is, uh, like a specific unto himself and this one's a liquid so this one's a little bit different right so this is the only one with a doe foot applicator in this whole bunch of contours that I've tried for the color of this I gave it a five and I think that's a little bit generous this is really brown however however I gave it a five because when I put it on my skin and I blended it out it did look more gray it, did, it had a little bit more of that quality blended out on my skin but like it doesn't really look like that now I did receive a comment where someone thought this might have been a mislabeled one and it could have been a different color I don't know I only have this color and I'm not buying it again it's not the one that I'm choosing above all else it's not the one that I'm going to choose for myself so it's not worth me trying to find the other one because I have some other qualms with it blendability I gave this an eight I found this actually really easy to work with I found that I liked it better if I took my brush to the doe foot and then put it on that way. I did like it better that way, but I have applied it directly to the skin with a doe foot and it still blended out beautifully. I just feel like the color looked better with less of it on my skin. And it was something that I could draw the lines on my face and then, you know, not immediately blend them out and it still blended out beautifully. Something that I often have trouble with when it comes to liquid products, liquid cheek products, like so liquid highlighter, liquid bronzer, liquid blushes, is that I'll put it in one place and then I will try to you know blend it out and then it just there's like a very clear spot where I first applied it and it just won't buff out and I did not have that issue so I found that it was really I could apply it all over my face then take my time blending it out but it blended out pretty easily and very nicely for that it's it's actually it was very good it was a very easy to work with liquid product 
so I really liked that. Nose contour ability. I gave it a, a five out of 10 because you can take the doe foot there. I think it applies way too much on the nose, not so much on like the cheeks and like the, the other places. I, like I said, I liked less was more for this product specifically, but on the nose, it like gave me like, you know, it was, it was fine. It was, it was fine. It was fine. I could do it, but like, I don't find that it was like the easiest applied to the nose. It wasn't the hardest applied to the nose. It was just like a straight down the middle five. Ease of use. I'm also going to give this a five for ease of use. I think that liquid products, especially like whenever it comes to ease of use, I don't think that they're particularly easy products to use. That also depends on the level of pigmentation because like really lightly pigmented liquid products tend to look really beautiful and kind of watercolory. And I really like that. Like I think that about these Surratt liquid blushes, I think that they're like really lightly pigmented and they just like are a wash of color on the skin. And I find it's really hard to get yourself into trouble, but I find that like when you're using more pigmented things, if your placement's not quite right and if and even though this is like easy to blend I just don't think that like I'm gonna like you know like a liquid is not really where I'm running to it wouldn't have been the first choice for me now if it had been the best overall I still would use I would be like yes it's the best overall but I don't and so for beginner friendliness because of all the things I just said I think that this gets a four out of ten I just don't think if you're a beginner that li liquid is just not where I would start when it comes to like this kind of contouring I, I wouldn't use it as your first foray I would use literally anything else. One last thing to know about this before I move on. I feel like no one, I don't feel like anyone was trying to call me a liar, but I do feel like people were trying to make me think that what I was saying and experiencing wasn't true. The first ingredient of this on the packaging online, it is mica. Whenever I would blend this out, sparkles. Less sparkles than you would think for something where its first ingredient is mica. So not like Edward Cullen Sparkles highlighter, but these, they were almost like holographic too. They would like kind of reflect back rainbow. You would, I would just find them on my cheeks whenever I would use this. And the more I would buff and things on top of it, the more sparkly I would, I would get. So let's say I used this and then I powdered my face and then me powdering my face would agitate the product and then make more sparkles come out. And then if I use a powder bronzer on top of the area where I use it, then it would also make more sparkle come out. So this is sparkly and I don't ideally want my contour to have sparkle in it. It doesn't look like when you look in the packaging, it doesn't look like incredibly mica filled product. It doesn't look like that, but there is mica in there. And I do think that it's visible again, not like a highlighter, but it just, it was like also inconsistent. Like, I think I would have liked it maybe a little bit better if there, like there was like maybe more or more consistent. It was just like very confusing that I would have like these iridescent sparkles on my face that weren't my highlighter. So for that, it's just like, you know, it gets a little bit of a lower score from, from me. Like I just, I don't, I don't understand. I wouldn't use this as a contour. I also tried using it like as a bronzer, like thinking of it as a bronzer and I didn't really care for it in that way either. But I think ultimately the next person I pass this on to, I'd be like, use it as a liquid bronzer. Now I didn't use this in my eyes or anything like that. It's like one of those things that can be used multi-purpose. I think I'm good. I don't think I need to use this as an eye product and I'm not interested in trying it that way either. The next one was the most shocking to me on how bad it did and how much I didn't like it. In sixth place with a score of 33 out of 50 is the Westman Atelier. <laughs> Face Trace Contour Stick, and this is in the shade Biscuit. Now, I did not buy this for the video. I borrowed this from my roommate, and I bought them this last year for their birthday because I always have lusted after this product. Now, this is not my first foray into Westman Atelier. I've had other products from them. Let's talk more about my experience. For color, I gave it a five. I don't think there's enough gray in it. I don't even think that's cool toned. <laughs> in fact, I think it looks more like the... Danessa Myricks than even the last couple that I have been through that I were like, it's brown, but not gray enough. It's so brown. It reads so brown. And if you're into that kind of brown tour, then this will be great for you. But like, I, I was looking for something cool toned and wow, did this really break the spell that the idea of this product had on me. For blendability, I gave it a seven out of 10. I don't think it's as blendable as the blushes or even like the highlighter in the stick form that I had from them, which is I think, okay, right, you know, you want some of the product to still be there, right? You don't want it to blend away or go all over your face like the Oma one did. But like, I did find it harder to blend than I, I thought. And it, while it wasn't hard to blend, I still gave it a 7 out of 10. And I stand by that, but it's just like, oh, I thought this was going to be like a 10 out of 10 experience, right? 
Oh, before we move any further, the packaging on this is A1. And it is very similar to the Oma one, but the weight difference and like the feel of this is pretty luxurious. And this is much more expensive. So like you would hope you would get something like that out of it. Honestly, even though I gave the Oma a worse score, I would still probably buy that over this because I was just like very disappointed in this. Nose contour ability, because this is easier to blend and it's a stick formula and it doesn't have the problem of the other two stick formulas that I mentioned, I found it very easy to use on my nose. It wasn't my favorite to use on my nose, which is why I gave it a seven. But you know, I, I found that it worked very well on the nose. You know, just draw a line, draw a line, go up into the eyebrows so that it all connects, you know, if you're going to do the nose contour. So yeah, I found that it worked pretty well. Oh, I do want to mention I have facial hair and I do always take contour through my facial hair just to give me more definition, just like right on the edge and around the perimeter, like where most people contour their face. But I also just kind of just most of the time, my favorite kind of contour is make it just like look like it's a little more filled in, giving me a little more of a contour. It did not like blending through my facial hair. So just to be aware, if you also have facial hair and you take contour products through it, I didn't find this like to work very well in my facial hair. That's more specific unto me. I know a lot of the people who watch my channel don't really have facial hair, but just in case you happen to be someone who does have facial hair and you do contour like I do, then just be aware of that. Ease of use. I gave it a 7 out of 10. So still it's doing well. I think it like it's it did it's doing okay. It's just not doing the best in all of the categories, which is like kind of what I was expecting from it. And then beginner friendly, I think it's a seven. If you like this color, then I think this is a good product. Unfortunately for me, the color was like the biggest bummer of it. And I think if it had a better shade, if I liked the color better, then it probably would have been my favorite, but I just don't like the color. So this is going right back to Tiffany's vanity. In fifth place is the Ritual Defeat Inner Glow Cream Pigment in the shade Intuition. It got a 37 out of 50. I don't know if I mentioned that. For a color, this one gets a 10 out of 10. It's exactly the gray brown that I want. It definitely leans more gray. I think you can even see a, like there's like a little bit of rosiness to it, which I also think is helpful. This is the color that I was after. Now, just like the Danessa Myricks Vision Flush, this is a product that isn't specifically for contouring. It's just like in a line and it has a contour color that's maybe good for my skin tone. It's my dream color. Blendability, nine out of 10. Out of the cream so far, this one was the dreamiest and blendiest and worked really well and just became one with the skin so, so easily. And for that, I'm very thankful. Like it, it really worked out for me. Like it was, it's, it's so easy to work with. Now I have tested a couple more of these. They sent me some samples of some stuff and I really like this formula overall. Like if, if you find any of the shades in there like that you want to use as a blush, I just think it's like an A1 beautiful formula. The reason that this got knocked points is that I just don't think it's the easiest to contour your nose. It requires a brush. It's not super easy it's like not drawn on which I think that people who are like just getting into contour or who don't contour often probably would like that stick version better because it just kind of is easier for placement you know I understand that a brush is essentially doing the same thing but it's one of those things that I think that whenever I first got started like a stick just seems so much easier so I gave it a six out of ten but like it blends out really well as a nose contour. It's just like not, doesn't seem designed specifically for that, which is why I knocked it down some points. Ease of use, I gave it a seven out of 10 because yeah, it's like not a stick. It's not like direct on the face. And beginner friendly, I think that this shade's gonna scare a lot of people, especially like if you're not like as light as I am, but like obviously I wouldn't recommend this to someone with really deep skin as a contour. I think this could be a really scary shade and like a shade that maybe not many people would want to try as a contour because it looks too gray, but I like if you have as fair skin as I do, you might like it. If you haven't found contour to work for you, maybe try a color like this, even if it's not in this formula. But I gave it a five out of 10 out of beginner friendliness because I think it's a bit intimidating for people who are just coming in to contour, but I've really enjoyed this one. In fourth place is the Elf Halo Glow Beauty Contour Wand in the shade Fair Light. And it got a score of 39. So for color, I gave it a seven out of 10. I gave it a seven because it is really gray, but it also has a little bit of green in it, which picks up sometimes, but not most of the time. Like I felt when it was on my face, it, didn't, it never made me look sickly or green. But in a thick swatch, the green is definitely there, which could be a pro to some of you, especially if you have olive skin. If you were looking for that green to like kind of ground things and you're like, you have fair skin. I didn't find that it red super green to me. For blendability, I gave this a nine out of 10. This product was very easy to work with, just like the other liquid product I told you about. I found that 
I could draw it on my face and I had as much time as I wanted to blend it out. Obviously, you don't have all the time in the world, but it's not something you have to rush to do. You can paint it all over your face where you contour and then start blending it out. And then you you can take all of that time. You know, there's no rush to do that. It doesn't like set down immediately. It does set, but it doesn't set down like immediately. For nose contour ability, I gave it an 8 out of 10 because this wand, this kind of, this kind of sponge wand, it just makes it really easy to kind of drag it up your nose. Ease of use, I gave it a 7 out of 10. Like, I don't think it's the hardest thing to use, but again, I think liquids are like kind of scary for people who are just getting into contour. I feel like people feel like liquids are really out of control. I think that the sponge tip applicator on it, like definitely helps prevent you from getting too much. Whereas like something like the Danessa Myricks one with the doe foot applicator is a little bit I feel like you can accidentally go too far with that pretty easily. I wouldn't recommend a liquid first, but I think this is a really, really good product. And if you're already familiar with liquid contouring, then I think you could really like this. And I gave it an 8 out of 10 for beginner friendliness, because I think out of all of those things, it's just like a very good, solid product and very affordable. The only thing I don't understand, and maybe this is just me being stupid, I'm familiar with the Charlotte Tilbury contour wands where you twist the thing to before you put the cap on to make it stop. Now I think this is a twist so I think when you twist it down it pushes this down to stop the product from coming into the sponge but I don't know if you actually like squeeze it to get more product out or if it just like you pump it to get like you I don't really understand. I haven't had it not give me product, but I don't really understand the mechanism too much. I'm not saying e.l.f. specifically, but anything I've had in this kind of packaging kind of like always ends up breaking at some point in its life. So that's also something to be aware of. Also, if you're traveling with it, you don't want anything to squish it because it could just pop out the other end. But like, I think this is really, really good. A very good option for people who are looking for like a, a gray, a more gray than brown contour. It's great. So the next two are actually tied with the same score. So then I ranked them based on how much I liked them. So in third place, which is actually a product that I don't, I'm not going to actually recommend to you, most of you. And I don't think it's actually good for many people. It's very easy to use, but that's for a very specific reason. So in third place is the Elf Putty Bronzer in the shade Feeling shady. And I think this is exclusive to the e.l.f. website. I couldn't find it at any retailers. I could only find it at e.l.f.'s website. So that must be where you have to buy it. But for the shade, the color, I gave it an 8 out of 10 because it is gray. It is gray before it is brown. And for that, it gets points. And for blendability, I gave it a 9 out of 10 because it is really easy to blend. The reason it's really easy to blend is because there's almost no pigment to it. <laughs> I have really dug in there. I've used this five times and I have like a dip going in there because I try to get so much product because once I put it on my face, I feel like it disappears. So it's really easy to blend, but it kind of like disappears. <laughs> it's so that's why I'm saying that these scores are feeling a little bit arbitrary because it's like, yeah, it's easy to blend, but then what's the effect? I don't know that it really does any kind of sculpting. I also think that could be good for some people, like knowing that it's really hard to mess this up. Like I think it does some very, 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 very light sculpting. And perhaps if you're incredibly desaturated, this will be like the perfect product for you. It just doesn't have enough pigment for me, but I find that it's really easy to work with, but it's also just like, it doesn't really stick around as I'm applying it. I feel like I blend it out and it's just so, so lightly pigmented. It's like, did anything happen? Now, I don't know what the case is for the, the bronzer shades that are a little more bronzy as opposed to this one because it's like, is a bronzer product, much like the thing that started at all this Fenty bronzer. Beginner friendliness, 10 out of 10. Just know that if you are someone who's already good at contouring and you like this shade, this is not what I would go with. I would go with the Intuition shade from Ritual Defi as opposed to this because this, I need more. I need more oomph. It's just, it could, it just like kind of blends away. I swatched it on my arm in the Phytosurgeon's Cream Bronzer video that I did and like I just felt like I had to keep building up, building up just so you could see it on my arm. It's very, very, very faint, but perhaps if you're really desaturated, like you have like no pigment to your skin, this might be a really great option. It's just not a great option for me. I don't hate this. I don't even think that I hate it. I just like, it didn't work out for me, but like it is really easy to use. But like also it's easy to use for the reasons I don't like it. <laughs> this next one also has a score of 45 out of 10 and it is the Essence Baby Got Cheeks in the shade Moon Dust. And it's in this 
cute little packaging right here. But something you should know before we get into the rankings, it smells like watermelon candy. I don't know why. <laughs> Incredibly strong. I was so confused by it. I thought something was happening and I, I like ran up to Tiffany and I said, smell this. And they're like, why does it smell like watermelon candy? I was like, thank you. Because I wasn't sure if it actually smelled like watermelon candy, but like it sure, sure does. Know that. It dissipates. I don't feel like I can smell it at the end of the day, but it's like, if you're sensitive to scent, either the smell of it or like fragrance in your products, you gotta pass on this. In color, I gave it a 9 out of 10. That's a great contour color. Blendability, 9 out of 10. Like nose contourability, because it's easy to put on nose, 8 out of 10. I really don't have a lot of complaints with this product. Ease of use, 9 out of 10. Beginner friendliness, I think it's a 10. I think this is the easiest one that I could offer up to any of you to use. It's so easy to use. It's really, really a nice product. Its biggest downfall is that scent because it's just like, why do you smell like that? For me and my, what I want, the packaging leaves a lot to be desired. It doesn't feel very like cool to hold. Much like the milk one, it's like there's definitely like enough product in here. That's, there's 5.5 grams, which is like kind of consistent with the cream contours we've already seen. So like there's a good amount of product in here, but it's just like, I don't know if I really want to interact with this, you know, like on a regular basis. The smell actually isn't as off putting to me as I thought it would be, like I was warned about it. I ultimately like kind of ignore it. It's weird because sometimes scent really bothers me and I would think that some, like if you, like someone told me that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it. But it like didn't bother me as much as I thought. But I think I had just, you know, I gotten used to the about face lip butters that smell like candy. So maybe I've already worked, I've worked through my trauma with these kind of scents. And I'm like, it smells like that. And that's just what it smells like. No more to say than that's just the smell of this product. It smells like that. If you weren't looking to spend a lot of money, you were looking for the budget option. I think this was $5. Go with this. If you were looking for like, I think it's really great. I think like the formula start to finish this product is really really good the, the scent is the only thing that I think is like the most off-putting but the you know my ultimate problem is I just don't want to interact with it and that's okay like I think it's okay to admit that like I like I like to have more of an experience with it you know it almost checks all of the boxes you know uh, for me I mean it checks all of the boxes technically but just for me it's really great and I think I'm gonna give that to someone who's gonna like it a lot more like going to really enjoy it. I think it's a great, like when I think of out of all of the contours that I've tried, when I think about the ones I reached for the most, absolutely reached for that one the second most. Like it was the one that I liked. It, I liked it very, very much. I used it a lot. And then in first place, if you've been keeping score, you already know it's coming with a score of 46 out of 50. So not perfect is the Victoria Beckham Contour Stylus in the shade Travertine. The shade is not very good. I gave it a six. So it's definitely like brown, but it's so, you know, it's, it's more brown than it is gray, but it, there's a little bit gray in there. You can see a little, little, little bit of gray in there. For everything else, it gets a perfect score. Blendability, 10, 10 out of 10. No, nose contourability, 10 out of 10. Ease of use, 10 out of 10. I think it's very beginner friendly. Like if you were never contoured before, I think this is a, a really good route to go. Now this is very expensive and you don't get as much product in it. Let's see. You get 1.1 grams of product. So less than anything else, but also costs more than most of them. <laughs> I think the Westman Atelier is maybe the one that is more expensive than it. This is expensive and I'm aware of that. That everything else being so lovely about it, like I just love using it. I love using it so much. It's just really nice. And even the packaging, it's not super weighted, but it feels like it's metal. I would love if this was refillable because like this could be a forever component. Like it feels like it could be a forever component. And I love interacting with it. It's like little, the other thing is this is a lot like a Burberry product that I used to like, used to love. They don't make it anymore, but it was, it was this, it was just this. And I'm fairly certain I read somewhere or watched something where Victoria Beckham said she made this because they didn't make that anymore. And it was like her favorite product. I'm happy to have it back in my life. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think this is really, really good. The only issues I really have is like, I wish they had more shades and I wish they had more like options. Like they probably need deeper shades. I know they have four of them, but I would imagine that they probably need to go deeper. But also I kind of wish they would do more like, here's a brontor, here's a contour. So like this one's like a brontor. This is, my, this is a brontor to me. And then I wish they had like a more gray one because, oh man, then it would be like the perfect product for me. But the reason I say it's so easy to use is because of how thin this is, it's really easy to draw right where you want it. And unlike a lot of the stick products that I tried, because it's so thin, it's not applying so much product. Perhaps if this came in something as thick as the Oma, I would have the same issue that I had with the Oma product where it just like carried way too far or 
you just blended my whole face gray. This being packed like this makes it very easy. It's like really hard to mess up. I mean, right on the nose. So easy to nose contour. It's an absolute delight. Now I'm going to send you to some, just like, I'm going to show you all the swatches right next to each other so you can see them all on my arm, and then I'm going to wrap up the video. Now that I have told you all of my arbitrary rankings and I have told you my experience with each one, I'm going to reveal to you that I'm going to keep two of them. I'm going to keep the Victoria Beckham because it was ultimately like my favorite thing to interact with. But the real winner, in my opinion, for me is the shade Intuition from Ritual Defeat. This is the contour shade of my dreams, and I really love this formula. Now, of course, it ranked a little bit lower because of things that I don't think are as important. Like, I don't care about how easy it is to contour my nose, and I don't care how beginner-friendly it is because I'm not a beginner. But for me, this was, like, the perfect product. I love this product. If I'm talking about my personal experience, Intuition is first place. This is second place from Victoria Beckham, and in third place would absolutely be the Essence. If I flew somewhere and I forgot my contour and I really needed to contour, I would probably mostly just forgo contour, but like if I needed to, I'd buy this first before the, like, you know, the other ones. Well, the other ones would have to ship, but you know, like I would not hesitate to purchase it. Like it's very, very good. I'm very happy to be done with this video. <laughs> so these are the two winners in my eyes. Let me know what your favorite cream contour is and what contours you like. Um, I have affiliate links down below. If, if you decide to make a purchase because of this video, the affiliate links just, you know, send a little cash my way. No pressure to use them. They're just there. That wraps up the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I hope this was worthwhile for you. This took a lot of work, so I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful to you in any kind of way. Make sure you like this video and share it with anyone you think might find this interesting or that's looking for a new cream contour. Again, I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash hopemesstom. You can support me there or not. Whatever. It's up to you. You can follow me on Instagram at hopemesstom. And I think that's that. Remember to follow your hope and you will find me. I'll see you in a video very soon. Bye-bye.